Hello. I'd like to be able to come to every one of your schools and talk about wellbeing of children and young people, but unfortunately time won't permit. So I've made this video, hopefully, to simulate a little bit of discussion in your school, but more importantly, to improve things for children and young people right across our state. For those who don't know, my office has contacted a range of children and young people right across the state, and their health and wellbeing is always mentioned as a key thing that changes whether they engage in your, in your classroom or whether they in fact uh, disengage. So we thought it was important that we bring to you a little bit of that information to help you make some decisions in not only your classroom, but across your whole school. To do that, we've had a number of consultations around uh, and reports around mental health and wellbeing, both in schools and more importantly, outside of schools. Children and young people have definitely told us that their health and wellbeing is central to everything that goes on for them. So what we're hoping to do with this video is help you find better decisions within your school. In terms of that, we've done a number of research projects. They're all on my website, but we had a look at what drives health and wellbeing in schools, both from a policy point of view, but also a financial point of view. And we've also reflected that on surveys that we've done from schools themselves. And I want to just touch on a couple of those things as part of this presentation. You'll see on the screen shortly some data that is start, starting to raise some real questions about the health and wellbeing of our children. And hopefully this will help guide you as well. In terms of what young people have told us from day one, and particularly around Speaking Out survey, is that they're, they're really quite a very lucky young group in that sense that they work and live in Western Australia. And the vast majority of our students do well, and they're, they're loved and they're cherished but unfortunately, when we say that, there are many who are not. And as you know, children can be well today, but something can happen to them tomorrow, and that will change dramatically. So we need to look at how do we put structures in place to cater for all of that. You'll see from this slide that mental health is one of the key issues that are raised to us by children and young people, in particular by females. And one in five females in particular tell us their life is not all that happy. And that's part in part because of their mental health. But equally, about one in 10 boys say the same thing. So we do have a growing number of children that need to be looked at in a way that we haven't done in the past. Equally, if you have a look at particularly around females, the differential between themselves and males is quite dramatic. And somehow we have to look at what is causing that for females. Their mental health and well-being does impact on their outcome, it does impact on their learning, and it does impact on their lifelong opportunities. You as educators have an opportunity to change that. The next issue I want to talk about is safety in the home. Safety has shown that uh, it is a real key factor on whether children come to your school feeling healthy and well. You'll see in this graph that almost 10% of our girls say that they don't feel really comfortable at home and almost 7% of boys. So there are large numbers of children already that are identified are bringing problems to school from home. And it's one of the issues we need to look at more broadly than schools themselves. The next one is health and support. And this was a little bit concerning that in secondary schools, you'll see that 30% of our people or young people tell us that they don't know where to go to get help. That starts in primary school. It doesn't uh, show up as broadly as that but it definitely starts. So as educators, what can we do to help young people understand where they can go to get help if they're not feeling right? And that not feeling right can be their mental health, their physical health, or others. But you can see the next bit of that information is that one in two don't know where to get help in their community. And that in itself is a real problem for us. The next issue is about you, caring teachers. You'll see that most young people will identify that if they feel like their teacher cares about them, they will succeed. But we have large numbers of children already identifying that they don't believe teachers genuinely care. That's something that we need to challenge each other about and see whether in fact we can change the way we think on how we address young people and how they address us. And how do you demonstrate that you actually genuinely care about a young person? The last slide I'll show you in this particular group is around Aboriginal students. And we know that materiality for Aboriginal children does impact on their health and well-being, And that is something that's beyond the school gate. 
But there are things inside the school gate that educators can do. In particular, we can have a look at how we engage their culture and their actual uh, being inside of a school in a positive way. The next bit I want to discuss with you is what you as educators think about what is happening for students and their well-being in your schools. We surveyed nearly 177 schools over the November of last year and your responses were quite consistent, although quite um, alarming. They're probably not a surprise for those sitting around the table today, but they're things that you need to actually as a staff to debate, discuss and see what you can do internally about it. Just so you know, we are also taking this with our education sectors and ministers to see if we can help from a different angle. But in particular, you'll see the overall responses was a real concern about the mental health of children. In fact, the increasing range of mental health issues that teachers and others are uh, facing are a real problem for you. And you identified that in a way that we probably haven't seen it before. Secondly, you said that things like poverty domestic violence, drug and alcohol abuse by parents, uh, and mental health issues all create a problem for their students or their family, and therefore your students when they come back into your classroom. So there are issues that as a society we need to have a look at, but they do translate into something in a classroom. What is really quite, um, I suppose, very uh, humbling is that there were a lot of responses like the last two comments, where schools understand that and are trying very, very hard to do something about it. So many of you do have elements of a really good wellbeing strategy and I congratulate you on that. What we need though is how can we get a holistic uh, approach to wellbeing totally. Many of you raised the barriers that really impact on the way that you deal with health and wellbeing in your schools. You'll know most of these but there are times that we have to stop, debate, discuss and see what else we can do. So the issues on the screen were fairly consistent right across the board. In fact, the sheer volume and the numbers of students that you're dealing with, I understand is growing. And so do decision makers. We see that across our community. So it's not just children, young people. But in your case, we need to find how do we manage what is a really important growing issue for our, our nation. And there are also, as you can see, there unrealistic expectations placed on schools. I understand that. Schools are asked to do a lot. But we also know that if you don't tackle health and well-being, then you won't get good educational outcomes for students. So it is important that this becomes central to everything that schools do. What I'll ask you to do now is, you've heard enough from me, maybe it's time for you to stop and reflect on a couple of things. They're on the screen. The first one is, what does your student well-being mean for your school? But more importantly, what does it mean for your classroom? And secondly, what do you feel is currently working well in your school? and promoting and responding to student wellbeing. Thanks for that. Um, I hope you got a lot out of that conversation. I want to introduce you to a thing called the Australian Student Wellbeing Framework. This is a framework that all ministers have signed up to several years ago, but is very little known in schools. It's a framework that looks holistically at child well, well-being in all schools. And you'll see that it has five key areas. There's leadership, inclusion, student voice, partnerships, and support. When I talk about a holistic well-being framework, it needs to have all of those issues put in place. So I'm looking at that and saying, how does your school now fit into that? And fr from your previous conversation, could you actually tick off where it does fit? Because many schools do great jobs. They do things like breakfast clubs, they have uh, clubs after school, they have a range of activities including bullying programs, behaviour program programs, but very few have a holistic view of how do we affect or impact on children's wellbeing in particular. This framework, as you can see on the screen, is very uh, consistent, but it is a whole school approach and tries to draw in all of those programs that you have so that it, it is consistently applied to every child within your school. We all know that the impact of a whole school and wellbeing approach uh, in your school will improve all outcomes for students. How do you get there is up to you. We also know the connection between positive student wellbeing and learning outcomes is crucial. 
So again, when you start your learning programs, how do you actually make sure that the well-being part of it is actually front and centre? Can I finish with a couple of things? Firstly, there are a whole range of resources for you to help you guide your way through this important area for children and young people. They're on the screen now. You'll see that we have a range of discussion papers, particularly those supporting schools and student wellbeing. Uh, we also had the findings of the survey that you may be interested to see what other schools have said in this space. And I know when I showed it to the three sector heads, they were really keen to have a look at what schools were reacting to and so forth. The other uh, thing that you may see there is the Speaking Out survey and also some uh, what we call data briefs that you can have a look at in terms of uh, getting into more detail from what children and young people are saying about what's happening. I'll leave you with a, a link to the framework because that may give you a real good sense of what is a wellbeing framework and how do you as a school actually put it together. Finally, I'm going to leave you with two simple questions for you to debate as part of your um, discussions today. The first one is, what could be done at your school to improve your approach to student wellbeing? And I know we're all about in continuous improvement, so I'm sure there are things that you can do. And the second, second element is, what are your next steps to strengthen or embed a whole school approach to the wellbeing of your school? I wish you well with what you've got. I'll leave my contact details on the screen. Please feel free to, to go to our website. Everything is free. Um, and we would really encourage you to let us know how you got on with forming a really solid wellbeing framework for your school and your students. Thank you.